Two wins in 15. We're having a laugh. Southampton! At home! Welcome back to the verdict, ladies and gentlemen. Hello guys, how you getting on? My name's Aaron Kelly. Oh, fuck. I'm actually drained. Drained from watching this fucking team. Every single week. I'm finished. I'm finished. I very rarely want to sit on the side of the fence of we should sack a manager. Um, especially when this man that's in charge of Chelsea at the minute, Graham Potter, hasn't been given a lot of time. Uh, he hasn't had a pre-season. I, I hear all those arguments and I do get it. Um, but he has been given the resources to show us what he can do as a coach and look I know I also get the argument of he's basically signed a new fucking team in January and that's also not healthy for for the overall squad I think Chelsea's transfer policy is completely fucked and that's obviously not Graham Potter's fault um, but the top managers the top 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 managers in this division if given that amount of new players in a, a transfer window they make it work they certainly do better than what Graham Potter is getting out of this current crop of Chelsea players. And I'm very, very quickly heading towards the side of Potter out. As as horrible as it is to say, I've not seen anything. Once again, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I've not seen anything from Graham Potter to suggest that he deserves any sort of time as Chelsea manager or back in because he has been backed and we're getting worse <laughs> we're getting significantly worse you've got to show me something you've got to show me something I, I want to be able to see the vision I want to be able to see that the future that you're looking to build at this club but when we're losing to Southampton managerless bottom of the table Southampton at home and not looking like scoring we have an issue. First of all, there is obviously more important things than football that happened on the day. And um, obviously the news of Christian Atsu, former Chelsea player, of course, uh, passing away in the, the disasters over in Turkey, the earthquake. Uh, honestly, very, very heartbreaking. And um, all my thoughts go to his family and friends. Also, the same goes to Cesar Aspilicueta, who since the game has... Look like he's starting to recover now. He's in a hospital. He's up and he's talking, but received a very nasty uh, blow to the head in the second half after basically being bicycle kicked in the head by uh, Mara. Um, but luckily, he looks to be on the mend, uh, a true Chelsea legend, and he deserves all of our love and respect and support. Um, but as for the game itself, Chelsea were fucking awful. Again. Again. And in fairness to Southampton... They don't have a manager. <laughs> They're bottom of the fucking league. They could have easily gone to Stamford Bridge and lost on Saturday and nobody would have batted an eyelid, really. But they came to Stamford Bridge. They had a plan with their stand-in manager. They executed it well. Everyone knew their jobs. Everyone was able to execute said jobs. And um, they fought hard for their three points and they deserved it. Let's be honest. Let's make no mistake. Southampton, overall, deserved the win. First half, in particular, miserable miserable from Chelsea what's I say it every time what's the goal what are we trying to achieve what's the purpose what is the game the fucking game plan is what I'm asking for what are we trying to do what way are we trying to play football what is what is Chelsea's philosophy under Graham Potter tell me because I'm still waiting for an answer and the fact that I, I, I have to wait this long to even know what way we're trying to play football is concerning enough in itself. Outfought, outthought, outran. Um, when you give away a free kick that far out, I called it at the time. I was watching the Chelsea game on Saturday, and as soon as the free kick was given, I went to Zach, who was watching the game with me. I said, Zach, he's going in, no. And uh, what happened? It went in. James Ward-Prowse, you give him that kind of um, situation. More often than not, he's going to test the goalkeeper. He's probably the best free kick taker in world football at the minute. Um, him and Lionel Messi definitely probably top two at the minute. Um, and we we give him a cheap free kick on the edge of the box, and of course he converted it. Of course he did. He's he's incredible. He's in, probably one of the best dead ball specialists I have ever seen. Like he is unbelievable at them. Second half things improved slightly, 
from Chelsea's perspective. Um, and it was very much down to the introductions of, funnily enough, Raheem Sterling and Kai Havertz. And the best chance falls for Sterling six yards out. You know, when that kind of chance happens and it's missed, you start to ask yourself, is, is luck just not on our side? But you make your own luck. You make your own luck. And, um, you know, there's certainly a fine line to be drawn between unlucky and we're just shit. Ever since Graham Potter's come in, we have had, realistically, just individual moments from the players that have come in in January. Enzo Fernandez has had individual moments. Xiao Felix was poor the weekend, but he had he's had individual moments since he's come into Chelsea. There's no cohesion. There's no plan. There's no cohesion. There's no playing as a team, fighting for one another. I say the dressing room is probably the most toxic place to be at the minute. Um, I'd say it's... It's absolutely horrific. And, you know, when Graham Potter came in, was he a manager I wanted? No, I, w I didn't want us to sack Thomas Tuchel. And that's every day looking like an even bigger oopsie by Todd Bowley. As a fan, you, you see a new manager coming in, you have to do your best to back him, even though you're, you might not have been 100% behind it at the time. Um, he comes in, and probably the shortest honeymoon period of all time, the shortest manager bounce we've ever seen of all time while we win a couple of games in the Champions League group stage and that was really it. You wonder, you do have to wonder, is he too nice for a job like this? And I know you're probably asking Aaron what do you mean by that? Oli Gunnar Solskjaer seemed like a lovely, lovely man. Um, was he good enough to be Man United manager though? Absolutely not. I, I doubt the players respected his footballing prowess as a manager and he got sacked. Frank Lampard, same thing at Chelsea, same thing at Everton, Steven Gerrard, great player, I mean probably not an amazingly nice fellow but you know, didn't work for him either. Graham Potter seems like a lovely man and um, maybe for a mid-table club, a good coach. <laughs> I mean essentially, that's what we are now, a mid-table mediocrity club. That's where we are. The, the season, write it off. Dortmund during the week was embarrassing. And the main, you know, questions and topics being posed after the Dortmund game was, oh, well, Graham Potter can't go on and score the goals for them. And to be, uh, you know, for an extent, I can see that. Chelsea's finishing was stinky against Dortmund during the week. It was Potter's fault that we lost. How are you going to leave one man at the back against their fastest player in the team? It's basics for a coach. If you're attacking a corner, you leave one man more back than the opposition while you're defending. We leave Enzo Fernandez in a 1v1 and fucking Adiemi scores. Runs in, just like absolutely outdoes him for pace. Ridiculous. Um, it's those kind of naive decisions. David Datro Fofana finally got himself a start the weekend. He takes him off at half time and he wasn't even doing that bad compared to, oh, I don't know, Mason Mount, <laughs> who again, awful. I love Mason Mount. I, I really do love Mason Mount. You guys who've been fans of the channel since, um, obviously, Mason Mount broke through in 2019-20 in will, you know, will know that I, I really do rate Mason Mount as a footballer and he's been fantastic for us over the last couple of years. But he's on a downward spiral at the minute. And I do think a lot of that is down to this fucking shitty contract situation that he's having to put up with. Well, he's, I mean, he's putting himself through it, let's be honest. He's looking to triple his wages... Sorry, mate, but, like, you've got to warrant those wages being tripled with performances on the pitch. And you're not doing it. Like, when we go out to play a game of football, we look lost. We don't know what we're fucking doing. We don't know what the, what the aim is. We don't know... Like, I, I have to wonder, do half of our players know themselves what way Graham Potter wants to play? And the most frustrating thing about it at the minute, because you look at that Chelsea squad... There are some fucking good players in there. He's been back 600 million to lose at home to bottom of the table, managerless Southampton. We've got to have a conversation here, boys. And I don't know how much time he gets given because Todd Bowley was, was so bull tick in, in getting rid of Thomas Tuchel and so quick to do it early on in the season because him and Tuchel didn't really see eye to eye. He brought in Potter as, you know, this is my man, this is the man that's going to lead Chelsea into the future. Surely he's got to just stick with him now. And that is worrying because I do think a better manager could certainly get better out of these players. Honest to God. And I don't know who you go for. Like, do you go for a Luis Enrique, a Zinedine Zidane? Obviously, a couple of months ago, we were talking about Jose Mourinho, possibly. Like, if you offered me Jose Mourinho back right now, I would bite your hand off. I would say, absolutely, please. Please come back, Jose. Because we, 
We need that. We need someone with a bit of fucking balls. Because unfortunately, I don't see how Graham Potter motivates those players. It's one of his biggest jobs as a manager, anyone's biggest job as a manager, to motivate a group of players. And I just don't... They don't look like a player, a group of players that want to play for him. And that's fucking worrying. Genuinely, we're probably going to lose to Tottenham the weekend. We're probably going to get knocked out of the, the Champions League against Dortmund next week as well. Where do we stand then? Do we just write off the rest of the season and just see what happens, how next season starts? Throw another fucking 400 million at it in the summer? That's not the fucking way forward, lads. It's not. We need, as fans, to be able to see a clear and concise pathway forward that comes, that stems all the way down from what way the manager wants to play. Because at the minute, me and so many other Chelsea fans around the world are bemused as to what way we want to play football at the minute. And whatever way we are playing, it's a fucking losing formula. We're not winning games. In fact, we're losing more games than we're drawing now. It's, it's disgraceful. So far off. Forget top four. Forget Europe this season. Chelsea are going to be nowhere, nowhere near it. You keep you can't beat Southampton at home. Who the fuck can you beat? Do you think I have faith going into the Tottenham game next week? Usually Tottenham is three point lane. Tottenham is is the game that we're always winning every single season. Not with this group of frauds. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Are you Potter in or Potter out? For me right now, what do you want me to say? Like I can't blindly back him. If I want to back a manager, I want to be able to see something. And at the minute, we're not getting anything out of Graham Potter and Chelsea. See you next time.